What is up guys, Fado82 coming at you with another edition of Rust Cribs, in which we take a look at some of the more noteworthy base designs during the past wipe cycle on the US Rustopia server. This series is broader than Rustopia and we do talk about building trends in Rust and take a look at some cool examples of base and compound designs. Starting us off here, we have a base design by the CML group, which is a relatively new clan in Rustopia. And this base design was primarily the brainchild of Philly Thor and Peter the Hermit, but all of the members in the CML clan worked hard to put this together. They've been building some very tight butthole, small compact base designs for the past few wipe cycles, and I'm happy to be able to go ahead and show this off. The main base sits in the middle of a large pumpkin patch there, and those pumpkins, beyond being a source of food, actually give members health. So when they need health on the fly after getting raided or going out to raid, they can pick up pumpkins and go ahead and eat that. It's not simply by coincidence that the clan leader's name is Big Pothead. You guys are going to notice here that there's a shaft here with a pillar, and this is actually a fire pole technique that the members are generous enough to show off to everyone on YouTube. Typically we don't film inside a base in Rust Cribs, but they they perfected this fire pole technique making use of the new pillar system where they can make this area in their base. If they look straight at that pillar, run into it, they can slide down it. They do take some splinters to the penis, but it's well worth it when you can get into the fight a little bit quicker. As we pan out here guys, notice that the compound is structured very well and that everything has its own place. So the quarries and pump jacks are walled off separately from the main base. The pumpkin patch has its own area as well. You'll notice that they're flying their clan tag here high and proud, which is something that's both ominous and welcoming at the same time. As we pan out from the CML clan tag here, you guys can get a sense of the geography and notice that there's a water base down here which is relatively close. This is the newly formed X group which consists of DMG, Pharaoh, Murdoch, and a few others. They built a water base with a massive footprint down here. Now it's not the deepest water base that we've ever looked at on Rust Cribs, but it's still effective with the design and a bridge has to be built into the base to be able to access it. That's how members get to it. And the base is a bit of a hollow, has a hollow core to it in that there's a hollow space in between the base and then the main base, which is in this core area here. I like bases that have cores integrated into them. I don't know why, but they appeal to me for some reason. And then there's the water here, which is a bit of a trap. So when members log off, they can remove those twig tiles. And then if any raiders come in and take that pathway, they're going to fall into an area where there's going to be water. They're not going to drown in this particular water base design because it's not deep enough, but they will eventually get cold and die out if they're not able to pickaxe their way out. Panning back out here, guys, you can get a sense of the absolutely massive scope of this base. An epic battle occurred here. I wasn't able to capture it because I wasn't online, but everyone on the server said they had a great time. Lots of rockets are fired at the base, and it did hold up to a lot of rockets. This massive compound is a joint operation between the aliens and Wrecked Crew. They, again, were building in the desert, and they created a vast city out here that is really stunning to take a look at. It's integrated with the landscape in a way that makes it look like it's an actual city. There's a rad town that they didn't wall off actually in back of them. And as we pan out here and take a look at it, you guys are really going to notice that the scope of this type of a compound really shows you what players can do when they put their minds together. Now, I know a lot of people are looking at this and saying, Fado, we want to see individual bases and not compounds. Guys, if you're interested in individual bases, take a look at the individual bases inside these compounds. Right now, Rust is really about building in compounds. Players have realized that to survive, they have to sort of band together and there's survival in numbers in many cases. And that's not to say everybody plays that way, but compounds are just part of Rust right now. And we're gonna show you some individual base designs after this footage, but while you're looking at this, just understand that you can still appreciate individual base designs when you look at them inside a compound, but you really can't avoid compound with Rust in its current state because Rust has become a bit of a land management and resource game in many ways. And the compounds are sort of indicative of that type of a mentality. As we go ahead and pan out here, guys, I want to go ahead and show off some footage of the new high exterior stone gate. And that gate does open very slowly, so you can actually build sort of structures behind it. You'll notice that there's a technique here, which was shown off by other YouTubers, that you can go ahead and build behind these high exterior stone gate. I think Holdacious has a video on it and make sort of an airlock method because those gates open and close very slowly. So if you don't have something behind it that's going to keep people from running in, it's going to be a very dangerous situation. As we go ahead and pan out here, these are some other bases that were within this massive compound. So you can see sort of the scope of it and each base had its own individual sort of feel to it. It was really interesting to look at this compound because it was one of the largest sprawling compounds that we've seen and it was just really an effort of a lot of people and it was really nice to see that in Rust, that concentrated effort. This group here, these were sort of outliers. They had a base built right outside that compound, so they might be new recruits or perhaps slaves, but they were having a good time in here and playing a little game by throwing an ax at a picture. So glad we were able to capture that action right outside of that big compound. As we go ahead and pan back out, guys, just appreciate the scope of that. 
And now we're moving over and taking a look at some single player or smaller group base designs. This is Mr. Camel's Den of Debauchery. And what you guys can notice here is that he has a tower here in the middle which gives him a 360 degree radius so he can see what's going on and also fire in any given direction at any point in time. That's critical to a base design whether it's a large compound or a smaller design like this. The biggest thing here though is the terrain that Mr. Camel chose to build on. It gives him the high ground which has a bit of a built in tactical advantage. And while it's more difficult to get to the base, it's going to be easier to defend it when he needs to. This is a really cool base design to see. And some other things that you guys want to notice here are the use of those twig floor tiles to be able to build a bridge to vault into the base. So it's not something that can be raided very easily. This is another example of a solo player base design that we took a look at. It has a flank tower and then a main base which is walled off by multiple layers of the high exterior stone walls here. So again, this is an effective type of a solo player base design that you guys can think about building if you want to go ahead and incorporate something like that into your Rust playstyle. Taking a look at this design here, this was built by Skeeter, Boner, and Sweatpants, and another member as well. So three players put together this small base slash, you know, small compound design. Talking about geography here, they chose to build in a very interesting location, which is right by the dome, which is always going to be a prime piece of real estate but it's gonna have a lot of action going on so never a dull moment here very risky build because people are very attracted to that monument and will be likely to raid that base but what you guys want to take note of here is there's an outer flank tower over in the distance there which helps give the members a vantage point into that compound and also outside as well so that flank tower can really help to defend that main compound so guys when you think about single player solo player base designs solo player base designs Think about building bases next to other people. You can still have your solo player base, but you can work off one another and have added protection. So if you build two towers, it's going to have more protection than just one. You can have sort of crossfire going on with your neighbors. So instead of playing a lone wolf necessarily, I would try to make friends with at least a few people and sort of build together. And then you can have sort of some of that added benefit. You'll notice here with this compound that that flank tower allowed them to sort of get a vantage point when that airdrop was coming in whereas if they didn't have that it would have been more tricky to figure out really what's going on outside the compound so really important to be able to see what's going on outside as well as inside here's another example of a solo player basin that's out in the winter biome if you guys can manage to build in the winter biome it's going to give you a lot of added protection it's very difficult to sustain a large-scale raid in this biome because if you don't have building privilege you can't put down campfires to stay warm and to cook food and that's really important when you're trying to raid a base I really like this covering for the furnace that they have here. I didn't see anything like this before and it's really cool and I'd love to sort of integrate something like that. It doesn't have a lot of functionality in terms of protection, but it's really aesthetically pleasing. Take a look at that high exterior stone gateway that they have there and notice that they didn't have that open into nothing as well. They had it sort of bottlenecked by using those large exterior stone walls and then having a bit of an airlock on the inside of that as well. A little bit different than the one we saw previously showing you that you can do that differently. You don't have to do it the same way, but the concept of blocking it off is really open to interpretation, but something that you guys want to go ahead and do. This was an interesting base design that is one that sort of exploited a method to get up to the top of the power line there or the the tower rather and to build up there which gives them sort of a crow's nest sniping point up there very uh, difficult base design because when people get up there it's a bit exploitative but it's a very easy base to raid because you just have to get through the core of it there and it looks like that base was raided from the footage there was a really cool ship that was put together out here and a lot of hard work went into this the ship is also functional water base design so it's both aesthetically pleasing and functional as well it has shooting ports around the base like all pirate ships or ships it has a hull and in that hull has treasure and crew members and that was really interesting to see players put something together that has a real sort of creative flair to it but also has functionality to it as well that was really good stuff guys this was actually the brainchild of a previous attempt so we're going back in time and taking a look at some old footage here and this was an old base design that wasn't meant to look like a battleship but it was a kind of a mess of a water base and it kept sprawling and going out farther and farther into the ocean but it ended up looking like a big battleship so that was the impetus for putting together that ship design this wipe cycle on rustopia all right, guys, really hope you're enjoying this Rust Crib series and these bases from Rustopia. As always, had a lot of fun filming it. Fado82, peace.